Welcome back to Pokemon Sun. Last time, we went ahead and defeated Kahuna Olivia, and now, this time, we are going to leave the Hano Grand Resort and go for... We're gonna leave Hano Grand Resort, and we're going to go for the Aether Paradise. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have Calico in the front for now. Let's go. <clears throat> Alright. So, you've come at last. Ah, but forgive me. I have yet to introduce myself. You may call me Faba. I told you before that I would show you some place astounding, right? Well, that wondrous place is Aether Paradise. Let me tell you about Aether Paradise. Just as the name suggests, Aether Paradise is a veritable paradise for Pokémon that floats far out in the sea surrounding Alola. It is an artificial island made entirely by human technology for the protecting of Pokémon. Of course, I'm an adult who keeps his promises, so I will prove to you that all I've told you is the absolute truth with a tour of Aether Paradise. You will come, won't you? Yeah. Good, good. Then you'll come with me. Aether Paradise will amaze you. Wait, take me too. Oh, even Kahuna Olivia has come to see you off. As a Kahuna, I look after all the trial goers who come to my island. They're like my own children. Not that I've got any. I've never even gotten married. Listen up, you two. Your greatest opponent is always yourself. Your greatest ally is the Pokemon beside you. Thanks. Are you coming too, Professor? I've got my own business to attend to. You go see all the amazing tech that Aether's developing and tell me about it later, yeah? That's right, I'll see you on the next island. Ula Ula Island, yeah? Then let's meet up at Molly Garden. Yep, it's goodbye, Akala Island. Though I guess we can come back anytime we want to, huh? Then let us enjoy an adventure upon that grand vessel that will take us across the high seas. By which I mean to say, the ferry. Can you believe a big hunk of iron like Aether Paradise can float in the sea? And it's all because of the Pokemon holding it up. Did you know that, Matthew? Really? Knew I could count on you to react. <laughs> I can't wait to actually see inside Aether Paradise for myself. And there's just the soulless stare. The soulless protagonist stare that is omnipresent throughout Pokemon. Though it's notably most omnipresent here. And here we go, Aether Paradise. <clears throat> and thus, here we are. Here we are, you two. This is Aether Paradise. And there's a Sudowoodo and a Young Goose. Up the elevator they go. Aether Paradise is a facility created for the conservation of Pokémon. It has been outfitted with all of the latest technology for this purpose. Downstairs, our teams work on developing new Pokeballs and more. Yes, all for the sake of Pokemon conservation. Though you will not be able to use any of your Pokeballs within Aether Paradise, a jamming signal is broadcast throughout the facility to prevent them from functioning. <clears throat> and who could this be? Excuse me, Mr. Faba. Yes, excuse you. What is the meaning of that form of address? I have a title for a reason. How else would anyone, will anyone know how important I am? Yes, branch manager Faba. Now I must go speak with the president about the, our conservation efforts on Akala. Show these children around, then take the, them to meet the president as well. Alright. Phew. 
Welcome to Aether Paradise, Matthew and Hal. My name is Wick. Nice to meet you. Wait, you know who we are? How'd you know that? One of our employees told me about your meeting on Akala Island. And of course, I heard how you helped protect the Pokemon there too, young Mr. Hal. Thank you very much. Let me show you around. The main entrance is up above us. <clears throat> Alright. Shall we zip right up there? And thus, here we go. This is the main entrance. You can have your Pokemon taken care of at the reception desk there if they need it. Matthew, you and Hal are both trial goers, aren't you? Are you hoping to become champions? I suppose. You must be around 11 then. I guess within the context of this universe I am. Yeah, I took the first chance I had to join in the island challenge once I turned 11. Cause someday I really want to be able to beat my Gramps, but he's way too strong. How, how lovely for you. I suppose all children must yearn to take a journey of their own choosing when they get to be about your age. Though you're hardly just children anymore. Trainers are like parents to their Pokemon. Matthew, how? Would you two like to see the conservation area upstairs? We'll zip right up. Alright then, up we go. To the conservation area. Wait a second, why does this place seem familiar? Aether Paradise is a safe haven for all. The use of Pokeballs is strictly forbidden within the conservation area. Wow! We keep Pokemon that have been targeted by Team Skull here. And we also try to support Pokemon that need a little extra protection. Like Corsola, for example. They are quite terribly overhunted by a Pokemon called Toxapex. I hope you don't mind if I read a passage from my Pokedex. Toxapex. Toxapex crawls along the ocean floor on its 12 legs. It leaves a trail of Corsola bits scattered in its way. Oh, god. Yeah, my Gramps is always saying that nature's got its cruel side. Sure as it gives us blessings. But can the Aether Foundation really protect all the Pokemon that are out there? Nature does have its own balance, of course. It can be difficult to judge just how much we humans should try to affect that, can't it? It's pretty amazing. The Aether Foundation seems awesome. But why'd you bother setting up a branch in a place like Alola? I couldn't say. It's hard to know for sure what our president is thinking sometimes. If you'd like to meet President Lusamine, she should be here in the conservation area now. Hmm. Alright then. You interested in meeting the president? She should be somewhere in here, right? So let's go ahead and wander around a little bit. Imagine using the same Pokemon in your boxes in battle again after hundreds of years. It's like, kind of time machine, isn't it? PZ boxes were first developed by a guy in the Kanto region called Bill. Apparently he's a real Pokemon maniac. And we can't go any further from there. When Pokemon evolve, their appearance can change quite a lot. Some Pokemon can also change forms, which can change how they look in their stats. And then there are the regional variants, which are quite another thing altogether. Pokemon that don't just change into regional variants like they might change forms. Starmie is known as the mysterious Pokemon. If it's really a star from the night sky appearing to us in a different form, then it's like a Pokemon is just using us humans and making us take care of it. Do you even ima- do you ever imagine things like that? I do. Hmm. Interesting. That just leads us back to the center. Let's go around this way. Regional variants. It can all seem a bit complicated, but think about it like this. If you visit a tropical region, you get a tan, right? Isn't it something like that? Hmm. Perhaps it is. Alright then. My sweet Pokemon, I promise I'll keep you safe. I'll protect you with my love. Ah. <clears throat> you must be Matthew and Hal. Welcome to Aether Paradise, the Aether Foundation's own private island. I am the president of the Foundation, but please just call me Lusamine. I'm so glad that we got to met. To meet. 
I'm glad there are people like you who travel the islands to learn more about Pokemon. But there are also those unfortunate people who harm Pokemon for their own selfish reasons or even for profit. And that is why I am here. I will be like a mother to all of those poor Pokemon and shower them with love. Even Pokemon from distant worlds, far from the Alola region, are worthy of my love. Wow, Miss Lusamine. I don't know how you do all this. You're like, not even that much older than us. Oh, you sweet boy. I'm already over 40. You are? Well, yeah, I guess. Wait, what? Oh, you. The right style does wonders, you know. And how? Your style is a bit wanting, hmm? I'll have to take you out sometime and help you pick a smashing outfit. Like what you wear? I don't think anyone else could pull off that kind. Look, except maybe Lily. Oh, don't you worry. You just leave everything up to me. Trust me, children would all be much happier if they'd only listen to the adults around them. Uh-oh. There's that blank soul of stare. That tremor. Did something happen on the lower floors? For once, the soulless stair disappears as emerging from the portal. It is... a thing. Did you come from another world? Miss Lusamine, stand back! That thing's not right! You poor creature. I've never seen a Pokemon like that. Are we gonna go fight that, that thing? And well, I guess we are. Question mark, question mark, question mark up here. And it gains an aura. Gaining a sharp defense boost. This Pokemon is poison and rock type. The first of its kind, actually, I believe. We're gonna go for a fake out. Which doesn't really do all that much. We're gonna go for a bite now. Which continues to flinch it. And now we're gonna go for another bite. Which doesn't flinch, and it goes for Venoshock. It did 30, meaning a crit will probably do somewhere around 45. And a crit knocks it out. And it is gone. The unidentified creature disappeared. So it's true. I still need that Pokemon. I need to get it back. What? Miss Luzamine, did you say something? That creature we just saw was undoubtedly an Ultra Beast. An unknown being from another dimension that suddenly appears from the Ultra Worm Hole. It looked like it was suffering. Like it pained to be in this strange place. I can't bear to see that happen. I will save it. And I will love it. Thank you. Both of you. Thank you so much. Wick. These two are still in the middle of their island challenge, aren't they? Please deliver them to the next island. Oh, oh uh, once, ma'am. I will go to check that none of our poor resident Pokemon came to any harm. And I need to speak with Mr. Faba about exactly what happened downstairs. And of course, I would love to start preparing the foundation for our newest and perhaps greatest duty yet. The protection of the Ultra Beasts. I'll see the two of you to Oluula Island then. Bye for now. Hmm. 
Something seemed a bit off there. I never thought I'd actually get to see the Ultra Wormhole in my life. We've got to tell Professor Burnett about this the next time we see her. I don't know if what happened should be rightly described as an accident, but I think it's probably best if you do so. Anyway, I was very glad to meet you both. Please take this to remember your visit. Some Malasadas for how? Yes, big Malasadas! Awesome! Isn't it crazy how Malasadas taste even better when you eat them together with someone else? Yes, I think I know what you mean. Meals always taste better when they share them when you share them with the ones you love. And for you, Matthew. Oh my goodness, it's it's psychic. We're already getting such an amazing move early on. Unfortunate thing is, I don't think any of my Pokemon can learn it, not even Sylveon. I hope you both have wondrous adventures on your island challenge. We will! Thanks, Ms. Wick! As unfortunate as it is, I don't think any of my Pokemon can learn. Oh, my hair's still kind of racing, you know? The Ultra Wormhole is real, and Ultra Beasts are real too! The world is just way too big. I will discover even more new things on the next island too. We're gonna need all the energy we can get. Time to dig in. You want a Malasada? Ah, uh, so good! Shoot, I already ate the whole thing. Excommunicate him. Anyway, here we are, Ula Ula Island. New island. And on this island, we will be getting two new team members. Though for now, we'll only be getting one. The second one actually... We'll actually be getting both of them reasonably quick before the second trial on this island. Alright, Terra Firma underfoot again. Ula Ula Island is like another totally different place than Mele Mele or Akala, huh? I've got an idea, Matthew. Let's have a bath and battle. Uh, sure. I want my Pokemon to get a deep breath of this fresh new air. Don't worry, I'll make sure both of our teams are in fighting form first. Alright then. We're gonna have a nice battle with How to end off the episode. He begins with Raichu in its new Alolan form. Alolan Raichu has the signature ability of Surge Surfer, which doubles its already very good speed on electric terrain. We're gonna go for a fake out in order to flinch it. And now we're gonna go for a bite. It goes for quick attack, which doesn't do all too much. As a bite KOs it in in one hit af after fake out chip. We're to level 32. Power jump. Interesting, but no thank you. Ernie grows to level 32. And Leafeon is up next. How will have the evolution that counters your starter? So in my case, since I chose Poplio at the beginning, he has a Leafeon to counter it. Which means if you chose Rollet, he'll have a Flareon, and if you chose Litten, he'll have a Vaporeon. I'm gonna go for a bite. Leafeon is pretty physically pretty physically bulky. You get a decent chunk of HP back. Assuming you're just gonna go for another Giga Drain, I'm gonna go into... I'm gonna go into Ernie. Alright. 
Ernie really didn't take all too much. We're gonna go for a Beak Blast. You're gonna go for a quick attack, and unfortunately for you, that's gonna result in you getting burned. And also hit by a very powerful Beak Blast. And an unnecessary crit. Probably unnecessary, anyway. I don't know. Claire grew to level 32. Toracat is out next. Alright. Um... You're probably gonna go for something like a Z-move. I can- I can see you going for the Fire Z-move, so I'm gonna go into Ashimari. No, you just go for Fire Fang. Which gives us a burn. I feel like Hal's luck with burns has been... surprisingly good. Alright, well now you're stuck going for Bite. I'm gonna go into Jawbreaker 2. We're gonna go for the Sand Stream. And now we're gonna go for the Rock Z move. We actually did not see this during Olivia's fight, so let's go ahead and see it. After a bite, of course. Here we go. Continental Crush. He jumps up into the sky, somehow and forms a giant rock with a conveniently flat bottom that manages to completely flatten the opposition. And... that's the battle. Ugh, I had my breath held that whole battle. Alright, well, Ashimari's burned. So I need to get rid of that, but I guess, I guess, I guess brushing sand off of you is more important, apparently. Go ahead and have a red Pokepuff. And now I need to... I need to cure your burn. There you go, you're happy now. You can go ahead and have your feelers be put. And have an orange book buff. Alright, back in the Pokeball. <clears throat> ah, that battle took my breath away. I can't breathe the fresh air that way. We're supposed to meet up with the professor, right? Where was it, Molly Garden? Why do you want us to go to a garden? Guess we'll find out when we get there, right? Alright. You've made it to Ooh, Island now, big boy. This means all new Island Pokedex. Zzz. It's all up to you, but new Pokemon you'll uncover here, Matthew. Alright. Next time on Pokemon Sun, we are going to go to Molly Garden to meet up with the professor. Or, potentially, we're gonna do a little something first. I don't know. But we'll probably be going to Molly Garden at some point next episode. See you then.